This is Kevin Cole at the University of Nebraska. The topic is thermodynamics, and the example is internally reversible process. In this example, we're told we have two kilograms of water, and the internally reversible process is isothermal. The initial state is 1.5 bar and 160 C, and the final state is saturated liquid. To save time, I looked up the initial and final states, and we're asked to find the heat and work during the process. The initial state is superheat, so the superheat table for water at 1.5 bar 160C has values for specific volume, internal energy, enthalpy, and entropy. Uh, the final state is saturated liquid, and because it's isothermal, I know that the final state is the same as the initial state, 160C, and I looked up the uh, specific volume, internal energy, enthalpy, and entropy. All right, part A, we're asked to find the heat, and I'm going to use the definition of entropy. The definition of entropy is delta S equals integral from 1 to 2 of dq over t reversible. I'm going to write this integral by pulling out the temperature. So 1 over t integral from 1 to 2 of dq reversible, and I can do that because for this process, t is constant. And then I can integrate dq integrals, integrates to q, and I'm going to write that as 1 over t q for the process from 1 to 2. And now I can solve for q that I'm looking for. q from 1 to 2 is simply t times delta s. But I want to, uh, this is capital S, the table gives us little s, so I'm going to write this as t times mass times delta little s, and for handwriting I use script s there. And now I can put in some values. Uh, my temperature is 160 C, but I've got to convert that to absolute by adding 273. When you're working with entropy, you must use absolute temperature. The mass is 2 kilograms. My entropy change, uh, state 1, I'm sorry, delta, delta s is s2 minus s1, so s2 is first. I've got 1.9427. I'm subtracting S1, which is 7.4665. And that's in uh, kilojoules per kilogram per Kelvin. And when I crunch that, I get minus 4783.6, and that's in kilojoules. So that's the answer to part A. The heat is less than zero. So I'll say, Q less than zero, the steam condenses. Condenses. My pen is pausing here, condenses. On this end, we're at uh, vapor. On this end, we're at liquid. And this is a this is the curve plotted on a TS diagram. Temperature is constant, so it's a straight line. Okay, that takes care of part A. Let's look at part B. Part B says, what's the work? I'm going to pull in the first law for closed system is delta U equals Q minus W. You can always use the first law. I'm just going to solve this for W. W is going to be Q minus delta cap U. And then the table doesn't give capital U, it gives little u, so I'm going to rewrite this as Q minus mass times delta little u. Again, this is what's in the table. Okay, and now we have, uh, we have capital Q, and we have the u values, so we can turn the crank on this. So work is going to be uh, the Q value, minus 4783.6, that's in kilojoules, minus the mass, 2 kilograms, uh, times the change in internal energy, which is going to be U2 minus U1. Well, here's U2 up there, 674.86 minus U1, which is 2595.2. Again, that's in kilojoules per kilogram. So I multiply by kilograms, and I get kilojoules, and this works out to be minus 942.93. And that's responsive to uh, part B. So there's the work. Now the work is negative. 
that means that the work is done on the system. Now, does that make sense? Let's look at the PV curve. Here's the, here's the process on a PV curve. The constant temperature line is not a simple shape on a PV curve. And uh, state 1 here is at V1, and state 2 here is at V2, and the volume goes down. So that is consistent with work done on the system. So that makes sense. All right, a couple of comments. One comment is that uh, the heat is equal to the area under the TS curve. We, uh, here's the TS curve up here. When we computed the heat, we found it to be T times delta S. Well, T is constant, so here's delta S here. So the rectangle T delta S gives the area. Rectangle T delta S in this case. Another comment is that the uh, work is the area under a PV curve. So in this case, here's V1, here's V2, the area here, this is the work. Uh, and we could re I could say recall work equals integral PDV. Now we didn't use that integral here, so we'll say comment three would be uh, uh, integral PDV not useful because P is unknown during the process. And we would need P as a function of volume to work that integral. All right, let's recap. In this example, we're uh, looking at an isothermal process that's also internally reversible. Because it's internally reversible, we can use the definition of entropy that requires a reversible process. And we pulled out the temperature of the integral because it's constant. We found that the, uh, the heat was the area underneath the TS curve. When we were looking for the work, we pulled in the first law. You can always pull in the first law. Uh, don't just keep it in your toolbox. You should keep the first law in a fast draw holster. It's always appropriate. And uh, we rearranged that to find the work. We uh, sketched the process on a TS curve and on a PV curve. And if you do that, it will greatly increase your understanding of a process. Those sketches are very important. And if you can remember to visualize your process, all will be well.